Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode in our beginner scripting series. I apologize, it's been another few weeks since I uploaded. I honestly kind of got a little burnt out, but I'm hoping to be more consistent now. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the next part. Today we're talking about Vector3. So first off, what is Vector3? Well, Vector3 is what we use to determine three points in a coordinate grid and use that for position or size, things like that. So I talked to you about that um, recently, how Roblox, because it's a 3D game, it has 3D points, an X, Y, and Z coordinate. That uh, Vector3 is how you control those coordinates. So let's just go ahead and start scripting this. Let's enter a script into server script service. I'll just name the script Vector3 and delete the print hello world. So uh, to demonstrate this, I'm going to insert a part right here. And we'll call this vector part. And then we can move it somewhere over here, maybe. Next, inside of our vector3 script, let's go ahead and wait five. So we're going to wait five seconds before we do anything. And now I'm going to show you how to do vector3. We're going to use it for two things today. We're going to use it for positioning and sizing. Let's start with positioning. The way we position parts using vector3 is we first reference the parts. We say part. Right, so the part we just created, and then we can say dot position. So we're changing the position property. We looked at that uh, over down here, and we can say equals to vector three dot new. That's how you write vector threes, okay? Vector three dot new, and then you put uh, parentheses and put your three coordinates in there. So let's say I put it at zero five zero. I'm gonna do that and run the game. And if you watch this part right here. It's going to move, yep, over there to 0, 5, 3, or 0, 5, 0. I am going to go ahead and anchor this part real quick so that it'll stay up in the air. Now let's try this one more time. So watch, watch the part, and there it is. It moves up to 0, 5, 0. So this is 0 studs on the x-axis, 0 studs on the y-axis. Sorry, I messed that up. 0 studs on the x, 0 on the z, and 5 on the y, and y is up and down. So that's how you can position things with a brand new position. Now, what if we wanted to just move it over to a part? What if I wanted it to go right here to this red part? Well, what I can do is I can just name this red part real quick. And inside of our vector3 script, instead of saying its position is to vector3.new, let's just say it is equal to game.workspace dot red part dot position. You can do that. You can just set the position equal to something else's position. So if we run this, and wait a couple seconds, this part will move into the red part. And if you move it out of the way, you can see that it went right where the red part was. So that's how it does that. That's how you can do position like that. But what if we just want to change the position by a little bit? What we can do for that, let's just say we want to make this go up and up and up. We can say game.workspace.vectorpart.position equals to game.workspace.vectorpart.position. So we're setting it to its own position, right? The same spot it's at. And then we're going to say plus vector3.new010. Okay? So what we're saying is we are going to set it to its same position, the position it's at right now, and then we're going to add one stud along the y-axis. And if we put this in a while loop, so while wait, let's just say 0.01 do, and then make sure to put an end down here. If we do that, every 0.1 second, it will rise up into the air. As you can see, it's going up and up and up and up and up, and it's going to keep going up forever because we put it in a while loop that runs forever. So that is how we can do that. We can also change the x coordinate. So let's change the x coordinate by one, and the and remember, it's always going to be x, y, z. That's the order it goes: x comma y comma z. Okay. So if we change it by the on the x by one every second or every 0.1 second, it'll add one to its x position so it's sliding over positive one on the x but what if we wanted it to go to the right because it was just going to the left well you simply make that negative or what you could do you could either make the number negative or you can just say minus vector 3.new okay so now if we run this it'll slide over to the right and there it goes now just like we can do it with the other parts, let's go ahead and do it with the Z. So I'm going to just put a 1 there. I'm going to leave the X so it'll kind of go in two directions at once. So off it goes. It's every 0.1 second going negative 1 on the X and positive 1 on the Z. 
so that's how we can do things like that. It's really cool when we get to um, doing more things like that. It's, it's a super cool thing what Vector3 can do. But um, that's basically how you would do that with positioning. Now, I do want to show you what you can end up doing with this. Let's insert a part, and let's go ahead and make sure it's anchored. And let's move it up. Okay, and I'm going to name it teleport part. Now, this part's super important. Make sure that you set can collide to false so people can walk right through it. And then I can make it uh, maybe a teal color. And inside of our Vector3 script, let's go ahead and say this. Game.players.playeradded colon connect function PLR. So now we have the player stored in here. We could also just name this player. And I don't know if I showed you this or not, but you can actually just write player.character to get the player's character. And we looked at this a while ago, but inside of every single character, I'll just go ahead and put a block rig in. Inside of every single character, whether it's R15 or R6, they will always have this thing called a humanoid root part. And this is what developers like to move when they want to move the entire character. They change the position of the, human, the humanoid root part because that moves the entire character. So I'm going to move this guy out of the way real quick. And let's go back into our Vector3 script. And let's say player.character.humanoid root part. Make sure it's like that, okay? Um, it needs to be capital H, capital R, capital P. And then we can say dot position equals to game.workspace dot teleport part dot position. Now we want to make sure that this we place this above our while loop. Otherwise we're going to be going back and forth looping in this while loop and it'll never get to that block of code. And we also want to make sure that this function is above the wait because if that doesn't happen it's going to wait 10 seconds and then anything after the first 10 seconds of the game whenever a player joins after the first 10 seconds sorry this was 5 I changed it to 10 I'll put it back to 5 so anything after the 5 seconds um, it will then teleport our player so instead of doing instead of putting it after the wait we'll just put a wait inside of the function so whenever a player joins the game we'll wait 10 seconds and set its humanoid root part position to the teleport part and that'll give the effect that we've been teleported to that part, but really, we've just been changing the position. Alright, let's go ahead and join our game. And if you wait a second... Yep, there we go. As you can see, we got teleported to that part. So, we can put that part anywhere we want, and it will still teleport it to uh, us to it. Alright, so that is position. Let's go ahead and talk about size now. So I'm going to go ahead and comment out this line of code in the while loop, because I don't want it to do this anymore. And now I'm going to go ahead and come up close to our vector part. And I want to move it up because we're going to start scaling it up through script. And if we don't move it up, then we won't see as much scale as we should. So what we can do, we can say game.workspace.vectorpart.size equals to game.workspace.vectorpart.size plus vector3.new 1 comma 1 comma 1. Whew, that's a lot of code. So what that is talking, or what is that, what is that saying? Well, it's well. Size works as the the same way as position works. It uses three coordinates, right? The size along the x, the size along the z, and the size along the y. So when we say its size is going to be equal to its own size, right? That's why we say it's going to be set to its own size vector part size, and then add a vector three dot new. We're adding one stud to its size by saying that. So if we run this. We're going to see that our part's going to start to get scaled up really, really fast. <laughs> and it's just going to continue to scale up and it may kind of destroy our uh, our world because, well, we, we didn't ever tell it to stop. <laughs> it's just going to keep on scaling up forever and ever. So, uh, we don't really want that. So let's go ahead and stop it at some point. So the best way we can do that is probably by using a for loop. So we'll say for i equals 1 comma 10 comma 1 do. So let's have a little refresher. This means for i equals 1, so i is going to be equal to 1, and it's going to keep looping until i is equal to 10, and it's going to add 1 to i every time. So let's play again. Let's run this again, and it should scale it up 10 times, and once it's, 10 time, or once it's been scaled 10 times, it's going to be done. And as you can see, it just did it super fast. It did all 10 in a row. That's because we didn't add a weight. I should have added a weight, so we'll just go ahead and add, add weight point 0.1. We didn't have that in our while loop because we said while wait do, but we need to add that for our for loop. 
So now, if we back up a little bit, you can see our part is being scaled up, and it stops after it's been scaled up times 10. So that is positioning, and vector 3, and sizing, and all that stuff. This is going to be really important when we get into our game, because we're going to move players around the map to spawn them in when our round starts. I have an idea for that. I think we're going to do like a PvP sword fight sort of game. But if you guys do not like that idea, do let me know in the comments um, that you want to do something else, because I'm making this for you, so I want you guys to enjoy it. If you have any ideas for that, you can drop them in the comments, but it's not going to be like a super a super big game. Um, keep in mind, this is still beginner scripting. We're, we're not doing advanced stuff. So, uh, But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do subscribe, click the notification bell, and thanks again to my first Patreon. You're amazing. If you want to get the source code and shoutouts at the end of my videos, make sure to become a Patreon today. Also join my Discord server. Sorry for those who've been having a hard time with the bot. I believe I fixed that. So everything, if you've had trouble with the bot in the past in my Discord server, that should be fixed. So you can join that. Also, the link will be in the description. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.